Y'all catch anything? Not talking, huh? Beauty. Working the oyster bars. To the harbor just easing up to this little point here it all looks so good i don't know where to stop the boat because i feel like i'm stopping it on fish but we've got exposed oyster bars that run for i don't know a couple hundred yards mangrove shoreline a lot of mullet flickering just looks really really fishy so gonna jump in do some wade fishing I'm gonna have my little waiting station so I can bring an extra pole. We'll throw a little bit of both. We'll throw a little bit of power prawn or we'll throw the uh, little John later. But we got a, the bomber paddle tail and we got the little shrimp to bounce around on the bottom. Let's jump in. Got the waiting station out. Got my pliers, my water, my camera, and a couple of rod holders. So we got the wind to my back. Oh, good sized shark right there. Bright and early. Cruising right in those shallows. Man, that's a, that's a good sized shark, as I said. Cruising right on the inside of that oyster bar. There we go. There we go. He come back for it. Came up and bumped it and then... Yeah. Right, we get into some crunchy stuff. What we got here? A little red. Beautiful. Beautiful little red. I was wondering, man. I... Going about 50 yards here. Surprised I didn't have at least a trout hit. Nice. Nice little red to start the morning. Little guy. But I will take it. Absolutely. Sorry. Try to keep you guys straight. I will take it. Better than a nip from one of those sharks out there. I gotta figure something out here to keep you guys straight. There he is. I'm a little bomber. Come back for it twice. Look at that hard bottom, this crunchy bottom. As soon as I got out of that grass and into this uh, oyster bottom, he picked me up. There we go. Another fish. Another red, a little better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oyster bar right out there just barely sticking his head out of the water. All right, there's number two in the morning. Beautiful, beautiful morning so far. 
having fun. A little bit bigger than that last one. Just tapped it, just coming right off that uh, oyster bar. And there he was. All right, buddy. You head back in those bushes there. Well, back to the flats, he said. There's that shark. Now he's on the outside of the bar. That's that second one, a little smaller. I wonder what they pick up mostly as far as scavenging. Great time to get out on the flats and learn the waters because you can run without as much concern about getting stuck. And with the clear water, you can really kind of see what's going on down there, know where the potholes are, know where the cuts are, and know where not to go. There you go. Hit that one right here. Little trout. It's a pretty little trout. Now I just need a snook. We will have slam before breakfast. See ya. Sweet. Get right at my feet. What is this? Another trout. Wasn't expecting that. A little better than the other ones. It's just easing back to the boat. I'm gonna go find another shoreline. Nice fish. A little critter running around on him right there. A little parasite. Thanks. Spit in my face. It's a big five inch paddle tail. And they'll hit it. There we go. There's another one. Here's a little pocket of trout here. Same size as that last one. Oh, oh, spit my bait. Set that one right there. Brought you in a little green. Just kind of eased down the shoreline until eventually I got out of the wind, off of the oyster bars. And that was it. There was not a bite to be had. So I spun around to go back and fish this area that's been producing and has all the mullet. That's the other thing. There wasn't really any more mullet activity. Get back to the fish and back to fishing. I forgot my bag of baits. So I've just cut this bomber down as it has been getting a little tore up and fish don't mind. Hey, get in here. Get in here. Heck yeah. Got us some cut bait for later. We're just getting back to the boat anyway. Let's run down there, throw him in the box. And get reset and let's go work the other side of the bar. There's a fish. Been a minute. Been a minute. There's gonna be another red right there. Yeah, that might be the best fish of the day. And he was coming in like a little, little bitty trout first. Heck yeah. I was wondering if I should get on the outside of this bar and see what was out here. And uh, yeah, sure enough. Sure enough. Nice slot, right? Beep. 
beauty. Beauty. There she is on the bomber, just working the oyster bars. I'm on the outside of this oyster bar now. It's the third red of the morning, plenty of trout. It's so much fun, got them on the bomber. All right, buddy, back to your business. Oh, thanks for stopping by. Man, this has been a great, great little morning so far. In real deep, trying to get to that last oyster bar, but it's gonna be, well, just deeper than I want to go. Have the waders on. Probably fill me up. Deeper than I want to go. Okay. Let's ease on over there to that island. And then we'll finish up the day on that bigger island, both of which have oyster bars all around them. So we'll stick with the theme today of working the oysters. Okay, next stop. Really nice bottom here, hard bottom. Oysters coming off those mangroves. Plenty of water for fish to go in and out of the mangroves. Hey! Right at my feet. This ought to complete the slam. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like a really dark snook. I was kind of rushing around the corner here, hadn't got much of a hit, and I saw this big overhang mangroves and, and the shade, and I thought, this is a good spot for a snook. And he come just roaring out of that bush to crash this thing right at the last second. All right, I got you a mouthful of seaweed. Don't get us wet. Don't get the camera wet. Oh, old Mr. Snook come through for the slam. Beautiful. I knew there would be a fish underneath that bush. And uh, he just came right out and slammed it. I didn't have a five feet of line left. But... All right. Moving right along. Little puffer fish took a little chunk. Yeah, it's flat calm out here. Quiet. Getting warm. Big school of mullet right inside that cove. We've got the oyster bar here. The only problem with this is finding the spot that least likely has fish, and it all looks good, so just gotta decide where I'm gonna park the boat. Right, decisions, decisions. Outside of the bar, inside of the bar. Let's start on the outside. All right, guys, I'm snagged here. Sorry to disturb you. Y'all catch anything? Not talking, huh? There's a fish to break the drought. Out in that deeper water. Trout to break the drought. It's got some nice deep water out in, that, in this cove right here. 
Well, that's it. I've got the uh, piece of that cut bait in the rod holder. If something happens, you'll be the first to know, but I already had fun catching those reds and uh, gonna leave you guys with some drone footage of those oyster bars. Uh, the structure, the grass, the sand holes, all of that combined makes for a, a good spot for the reds. Makes them feel safe, a place where they can get up, get on top of that oyster bar, get away from predators like dolphins and people, I guess. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's get a bird's eye view of the oyster bars. On point updated. I just love looking at these drone pictures. It gets a, gives you a great idea of where you're fishing. That's a big sandbar running right down the middle of the screen. It's where all these oyster bars are. The green water, that's like a deeper cut. The black is the grass. The bright white is like exposed oysters. Watch here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a sand hole appear, and there looks like there's a big snook sitting in there. You see a, uh, a stingray to the left right now, and then right here coming up, see that stingray top screen to the left? Right there, look at that fish right in that sand hole. It's a nice snook. But, yeah, it's just awesome.